Welcome back, Seven Days to Die modding fans. This is Zith. And this video is going to pick up where we left off on the character creation video and move us towards uh, the Mechanum animation lessons on uh, the future videos. So I, I erroneously said when I exported this fellow on the screen out of the Fuse application, um, I didn't pick an animation uh, rigging for him at that point. Uh, which was um, misleading in, in that I said that you could put a controller on him and he would be great. But the, the issue is right now is that we export him out of Fuse in without a rigging. So we have to rig him and, and mix ammo in accordance with the um, flow chart here. So we made the character in Fuse, but we didn't, but we didn't rig him at all. So he, we need to next rig him in mix ammo. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll show you a couple of uh, tricks at that point. So first we need to go ahead and import the FBX file into mix ammo. So let me go ahead and do that. And here is the FBX file that we uh, went ahead and use. So let me bring up mix ammo and here it is here. So what you do is you upload your character. So let me go ahead and bring that together and click upload character. And you drag and drop your file in here. So I'm going to drop the test Z file into this spot here. Let's let it do its thing. And it's processing. It takes a moment. And there's the guy. Now, there's no texture on him, but no worries of that at this point. We can retexture him later. So um, you can use the controls and look at them all side, but he's cool. So let's click next. And now we have to set the uh, chin and wrist and so on like we did before. So let's do that real quick. And he seems pretty symmetrical, so I'm using symmetry. You can take that off and do each one side manually. Knees would be right about here. And grinds right about here. And now you can pick your line of draw skeletons. If you wanted to have fingers and so on, go ahead. I'm going to leave it at the maximum because this guy I'm going to use later on for a uh, rag dolling um, tutorial and so on and so forth. So I want a complete skeleton at this point. So I'm going to keep it that way and then click next. And there he goes. Okay, so he's done. Now that took a couple of minutes. Um, I, I chopped a bit of that video for the um, sake of brevity. And I click next. And you can see the gentleman right here. Now, this is a real important point. You want to stop here and you want to export this guy out of his pose. Um, it, that's called a relaxed pose or an A pose, similar to T pose, but you can work with it. And that's important because if you're going to do ragdolling things, it's a nightmare trying to ragdoll a character that is in some other pose, uh, like an idle pose rather than this. So at this point, click on download. And you see now it gives you this choice here of a T pose download here rather than the original pose. We're going to pick the T pose and FBX for Unity and download that. So that is now a rigged T-posed equivalent character. And it pops up in saving it. So I'm going to save it to my desktop next to the one that uh, I did. And at this point, now you can go and do your animation. So we'll do a couple of quick animations. Uh, let's generally I like an idle. Um, you can search on idle. And this guy is, uh, well, let me, let me give him, go for the brute animation series here. So there's a brute idle and uh, unarmed. This guy is going to be unarmed, so that's cool. We'll just take that as it is. The only thing around here is I check. Sometimes I change the width of the arms if it's like clipping into the thighs, depending on the character. So let me download that real quick and just make sure that it's... Uh, you don't need the skin on any of these. If you do, you're going to get all these skin folders building up in Unity. So when you generally do the animations, do it without the skin and make sure it's FBX for Unity. Download that one and um, saving it. And then I'm going to do a uh, see if there's an unarmed walk, standing walk, unarmed jump, unarmed taunt, unarmed walk. All right. 
and that's cool. Until we get root motion going, you want to do in place. So click on in place, and there he goes thumping along. So we'll take that one as well. We'll download that. And again, without the skin, download it. And for now, basically we're done. So I'm going to save that and pause this, and we're going to go. To, we're going to go to Unity. Okay, there's Unity. I'm going to get rid of this guy here. Um, get him off the screen, and I don't need his um, old unanimated one. Well, I'll leave it there for now, because it has the uh, should have the basically the textures and stuff that I need in there as well. And then let's go ahead and bring in. I'm going to rename this other test set before I import it because it's got a one after it. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, demo demo test set. And I'm going to drag that into this folder. And it'll import that. And then this demo test set, I'm going to drag over to the hierarchy. And there's our guy right there. Now, you notice what's a little different this time is now he has the bone structure that's been added in here as well. And all the clothes came over with him. So, so there he is. Now, we have to make a decision here. Is this guy going to be um, a generic animation or a humanoid animation? Now, generic is much simpler because it's the Mixamo um, uh, animations that we're going to bring in. Let me drag those in there as well. Here's the idle. And, uh, th and then I'll bring the walk in. They're already set up as generic, so it saves you the whole step of, of uh, confirming, uh, uh, converting that to uh, humanoid. Um, so we'll do that one first, and I'll show you that. Here's the uh, idle, and here is the walk. As you know, I usually go ahead and copy these things out. But what you want to do before you copy those things out, make sure you got the scale. He's the right size. Now, I put this entity cube here, and, and it's set down at minus 0.5. That is ground level in the game. You could also click on, put a plane, just a plane down at default settings, and you see it's the same thing. Um, I like the cube better because I want to get him centered uh, and make sure that he's centered and vertically um, centered as well. So again, I use that. Um, but I do use the plane for testing ragdolls because he'll just fall right past this thing. Um, now, he doesn't have a ragdoll uh, rag on him at this point, so there's nothing we test. So let me turn that off and leave that on. And now we've got the character in. So the, the next thing I always do here is set the collide, put the colliders on before I do any animation. Now, let me show you an easy way to do that. If you go to the, your, um, open up your bone structure here a little bit. I'm going to just bring this all the way down just to show you, get it set up, open up all the bones. There's the neck and the head, left shoulder, left arm. I'll slide this over a little bit so you can see it. Left arm. And don't really there. hand, you don't really need that. I'll leave it there for the forearm. And the same thing for the right shoulder. All right, cool. All right, so we've got this guy here, and we want to put colliders on him. And being lazy, um, the quickest way to do that is go on to under uh, 3D object, create ga game object, 3D object, and go down to ragdoll. And you get this little menu thing, thing here. Now, it's asking you for all of these locations here. And that's cool. So we're going to do that. But you do it by drag and drop it. So first thing, the pelvis here is the equivalent of the hips. So we're going to just drag hips over to here. And then the left hips is actually the left upper leg. And then the left leg is the equivalent of the knee. And then the left foot is the left foot. We'll do the same thing on the right side. Um, right upper leg is the right hip. The right leg is the right knee. Right foot is the right foot. Now we'll do the arm. We need the left arm. So here is the left arm is the left arm. You, I've used the shoulder before, but it's kind of odd on the rag doll. So use left, 
use the um, left arm for left arm, and then left forearm is the elbow. And the same thing for the right, right arm to the right arm, and right forearm for the elbow. Now we need a spine, and that you see the spine, spine one, and spine two. So it wants the middle spine. So we're going to give it spine one. And then we need the head. And of course, that's the head. Uh, total mass, you can leave this for now unless you really mess with ragdolls. But most of the zombies seem to be about 180. Um, he's a little big, so I think I'll make him 200 as far as his mass. Strength, actually, I'm not even sure what that is at this point. And so leave that alone. And now I'm going to click on Create. Okay, so click on the guy again. Now you see all these colliders that have been added in here. You've got the colliders on the arms and on the uh, box colliders on the chest and hips and then on the legs. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's go, it, it doesn't always get it exactly right, but it saved you from placing all of those on there manually. So let's go ahead and do a little quick, um, quick check up here. Here is the spine one, and you want to make sure they don't overlap too bad. So that one looks okay. Uh, the left arm and then the left forearm, they seem to be a bit overlapped. I'm going to pull this out, show you a little bit more here. Okay. So I'm not sure why it did that. Um, this one is left arm is really tiny here. So let me see if I get a closer look at what it did. So this is actually the forearm here. So it is pretty much the right size. You can then just edit the collider and then bring this down a little bit here, bring this up a little bit here, and you can bring this in slightly like that and fix that really quickly. We'll go up to the left arm and you see it's it's so tiny, can't even see it here. So the um, the radius here, let's go ahead and just make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. Oh, way too much. And the height, I'll just kind of drop this down a little bit. And then we can go ahead and click on this and edit it and get the point. Now, how this goes is you may have to change the axis of it, but it generally gets it right. So now we've got this this collider a little bit better. Right there, right there. So it's fine. So now that one's right. We do the same thing on the left arm and the left arm. You get the idea. So that's going to set all your colliders on it. Now, this is really essentially now a complete rag doll on a generic character. If we go to the test back to our um, test set and we look at the rigging here, oh, I'm on the wrong one, uh, demo test set, and we click on the rigging here, you see it's generic. And so if you're going to do it, um, the use these simply as colliders and not a rag doll, you got to do one further step. And that is on each of these ones that you did, you need to get rid of the character joint and the rigid body. Now you got to get rid of the character joint first, like this. You just click here, and then you just click Remove Component, and then you click Rigid Body and Remove Component. And so now on the spine, it is simply a box collider, and you do that for each of the ones you did, and you have all your colliders on there. Now, if you made this a humanoid model, you wouldn't have to take those off because you could leave the rag doll completely on. You won't get rubber banding limbs and all um, the other problematic things with putting rag dolls on generic models. Uh, but for now, that's how you go ahead and you set up your colliders really quick. Uh, I'm going to leave that here. I wanted to show how to do that import of the uh, export of the T-Pos out of Mixamo, and then how to throw the colliders on it really quickly. And because a lot of folks are still doing um, even legacy animation and that method for doing colliders is a lot easier than manually putting one on each limb. And again, I put colliders at least um, forearm, right, arm, two on the arms, each arms, two on each of the legs. And then you can either have one to represent the entire torso and one for the head, or you could put one on the hips and again, one on the spine, two separate collider boxes. But this is the way that I do it. 
So um, thank you guys for lis um, listening in. Uh, the next video will take this model and we're going to go ahead and do the mechanum animation of this character. So have a great day.